Good morning to everyone here today. I uh, start uh, hearing number six of the 130 and 83rd uh, period of session of the IACHR, which is titled The Situation of Public Policies on Business and Human Rights in Peru, which has been uh, requested by the State of Peru. My name is Stuarda Rallon. I'm the first Vice President of the Inter-American Commission, Commission on Human Rights, and I'm also the Rapporteur for Peru. And we have here Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Roberta Clark. And during this hearing, we will be joined by Commissioner Carlos Bernal. We also have here the executive, the uh, assistant uh, executive secretary, secretary. And let me begin with uh, a greeting to the civil society and the state representatives. I want to explain distribution of time. We will have 20 minutes allocated to the civil society, 20 minutes for the state. I also uh, greet the United States representatives who will be speaking for seven minutes, Jan Jarab, then the IHCHR will participate for 20 minutes. And after that, we will have the opportunity to receive final comments from the civil society representatives for 10 minutes and from the state from uh for 10 minutes and then we will be uh closing the session for three minutes finally some additional instruction we have a digital tool to measure time we also have um simultaneous interpretation and closed captioning during the transmission of the hearing this is a public hearing this is being streamed live on webcast and the recording will be available on our youtube channel in its original uh language and in english so with this instructions we start the hearing, which has as uh, the target to report on the progress of public policy on business and human rights, in particular as regards the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights. This is why I give the floor right now for 20 minutes to the civil society representatives. You may begin. Very well. Good morning to everyone. My name is Melania Canales Poma. I am the president of the National Organization of Indigenous Women and Women from the Amazonia from Peru. Very well, then. ONAMIAP has been participated in, in the process to uh, create this National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights from 2020 on. And from that date on, we have sent different inputs. We have contributed to this plan all this time, especially in relationship with our rights to self-determination, prior consultation, participation of uh, indigenous and uh, peoples and women, territorial rights, indigenous justice and the access to justice as indigenous women. Also health, uh, food sovereignty, among other topics that have been uh, addressed during these proposals. We have also requested re very uh, repeatedly from July 2020 to have information on how this prior consultation would be done to carry out this plan. We have not received any answer, any reply on this re regard. And this is why in August, we requested formally the Justice Ministry to have a consultation on the plan and we have not received a reply. In April 2021 then, we we're able to uh, present to submit our contributions. And to that regard, we have received an answer. And there was, our, our input was not visible, was not 
incorporated in the plan. And this is why we pronounced ourselves publicly. We presented five basic items related to indigenous rights that should be included in this plan. Above all, this has to do with the consultation and free prior and informed consent for the effective particip participation of indigenous peoples and indigenous women to guarantee the ancestral indigenous properties, that is land, food sovereignty and the indigenous jurisdiction. Only by May 2021, the Ministry of Justice answered, pointing out that prior consultation will be after the publication of the national plan. That is, after violating our rights, I, we will be consulted. So imagine a woman being violated, being raped. This is what we received. However, on June 2021, the uh, Supreme Decree number 009 established the approval of this plan until 2025. So the lack of consultation and the lack of incorporation of uh, women's and indigenous people's rights and the lack of incorporation of our uh, inputs has been uh, evident. This is a, a concern to us because it's not a real uh, guarantee to the protection of our collective rights. Liliana, I give you the floor. Thank you. Well, just to add to what Melania was mentioning, we were able to identify that during the e drafting of this National Plan of Human Rights, there is a violation of the right to effective participation of indigenous peoples. Uh, we requested the Ministry of Justice at the moment to have uh, technical assistance to provide our contributions, our informed contribution regarding the human rights plan, but this was uh, revoked. And the contributions that we have been able to present during the drafting of the plan were not incorporated in the strategic goals, nor in the different access and section as we have had requested in, at the different dialogues that we uh, held. Also, as Melania said, in uh, the document uh, 299 2021 we were told that the consultation will, would be done later on and that they would uh, create a working group with indigenous peoples but this situation as we have uh, reported at different uh, opportunities does not guarantee institutionality for indigenous peoples there is different uh, dialogue different spaces for dialogues but not all of them guarantee technical assistance for these meetings and the state does not organize itself and these meetings end up uh, overlapping in terms of uh, times and days and they do not guarantee a central space to debate all policies and measures uh, created by the state that are violating the rights of indigenous peoples. Before the creation of the cult of the culture ministry, there was the INDEPA, this was a space that had a ministerial level and was um, made up of representatives of the indigenous peoples, but this was uh, removed besides all these new spaces for dialogue and work are spaces in which indigenous organizations have not decision making power among the different contributions we made was that the state uh, puts as a priority to close the gap between the titling of indigenous uh, lands the state cannot grant uh, concessions or uh, idling in these indigenous lands. Also, there's a constant violation to the right of tough determination and development for these peoples because they continuously impose different extractivist activities in our uh, territories. The different um, mining uh, licenses or oil licenses are not consulted with the peoples. And there are 
uh, extractive activities that create an impact and are not redressed. And there is no clear legislation to compensate this. This does not only impact our mother nature, but also sovereignty, sovereignty and food security for the peoples. Finally, we would like to point out that this lack of compli compliance with prior consultation in the drafting of the plan is not only done by the Ministry of Justice, but actually it's a systematic practice by the state. We had a recent uh, sentence against the Ministry of Culture because they did not consult on uh, different works to uh, to maintain the, the infrastructures. Also, there is no uh, legislative consultation. And recently, we had a constitutional tribunal sentence that does not recognize the fundamental right to prior consultation, violates the principle of conventionality, and does not guarantee the right to a prior consultation of indigenous peoples. Thank you very much. I give the floor to my brother. Good morning. I'm here today to speak on behalf of the Matisse community to say why we want uh, the right to consent to be respected regarding the business activities in indigenous uh, regions. We reject all activities in our territories. The territories where these uh, activities are located, the speaker is um, on mute and the these um, activities affect the adjourned uh, peoples and has established an alliance with the autonomous uh, government of Matisse to work jointly in order to impede the progress of oil exploitation. We are based on the fact that hydrocarbon activities in Peru are not compatible to the right to life, health, territory, food, water, or a healthy environment. Ambiental, um, environmental organizations have registered since 1977. And oil spills in Peru, especially in the Amazon region. In 2016, uh, Petro Peru had an oil spill and this spill was not dealt with. This company was not sanctioned, arguing among other things that the uh, pipeline transporting the uh, products was not properly maintained and the company, there is an interruption in the connection. The speaker has lost connection. We have had an problem with the audio. Could we stop the timer? Yes, they have told me that he has lost uh, the internet connection. And meanwhile, Kathy Pauper will uh, continue speaking. Dear commissioners, Katherine Luz Park, part of ERI, part of uh, uh, business and human rights in the civil society. I'm going to highlight some things regarding the uh, PNA in order to improve it regarding private safety. Um, this plan points out that regarding uh, private uh, security, this is uh, this will improve uh, private security, and that is no information in regarding barriers affecting uh, access to justice. In fact, there are serious observations regarding access to justice, but it's not only that, there are other observations that have been presented by the civil society that were not taken into account. For example, there is uh, not 
a framework to guarantee transparency of information regarding private safety that hinders civil society to access key information regarding the use of force by the uh, staff that uh, works in this uh, private security sector. There are not there are not any programs to protect human rights in these situations. There are no regulations with an intercultural approach in this PNA. They do not question the lack of uh, regulations incorporating an intercultural approach for private security uh, uh, activities. In the context of extractivist activities, this poses a high risk for indigenous communities and other sectors uh, suffering great vulnerability. So this plan should recognize these observations as in general, uh, private security companies are hired by extractivist companies that are located in the territories of indigenous communities and peoples. Regarding other observations, dear commissioners, on the use of force and uh, agreements with the national police in Peru, the PNA highlights that the Peruvian state has adopted a normative framework to regulate the use of force, and that represents a great uh, progress. However, the PNA does not mention that the normative framework has not been able to guarantee in practice the violation of human rights when these extraordinary agreements uh, with the police are put in force, as there are several cases of excessive use of force by the police and criminalization of indigenous peoples who uh, claim and protest to defend their human rights. Although the Constitutional Court has established its procedures for the implementation of extraordinary agreements, they have not taken into account that the uh, these Contravien extraordinary agreement contravenes international standards. Thus, this has been mentioned by the former Rapporteur on Human Rights uh, from the UN in the report issued in 2019. And in the report on business and human rights that has been uh, published by the Inter-American Commission. It is important for the PNA to establish actions to guarantee uh, pillar number two regarding human rights. I will give the floor to my uh, colleague Galoy will come back. He had lost his connection, but he's uh, already here. I was saying that in there was an oil spill in the coastline of Peru. Fishermen have not received uh, subsidies in for the damage caused to the marine sediments. Fishermen have suffered damage to their activities for many years, and they have there have been no remedies to uh, compensate these. Um, uh, spills, the Kicha, Actuara peoples. These are indigenous peoples whose uh, territories have been affected by activities. And more than 300 spills in the last 30 years have been registered. A state research shows that the uh, water from the main rivers and basins are polluted. In 2016, state research showed that there is heavy metal presence and hydrocarbon presence in the water exceeding uh, all limits. The state has a power to control uh, companies and prevent impact and develop um, all kinds of measures to repair uh, communities, but they delay a uh, process to provide compensation to their communities. In spite of the historical opposition of the indigenous peoples to oil activities in their uh, territories, a decree was passed to modify uh, the contract in this uh, sector in order to allow uh, Territory 64 to be exploited. 
there is a great history of local struggle and fight to oppose the activities of the companies. Peru Petrol carried out hearings within the framework of uh, community civil participation. And the One Piece uh, community that was represented and also com local communities in order to allow the uh, access to these communities, uh, fostering uh, different disagreements amongst the different peoples. We do not, we believe that prior consultation is used by state to allow access to our territories. We want our uh, right to a free determination to be respected. Indigenous peoples should be allowed to participate in those decisions that affect their fundamental rights. We want to live in a healthy environment to ensure our livelihood as a cultural group and to have the conditions so that our future generations are not exposed to environmental and social pollution. Thank you. Thank you. I will now give the. Uh, I will now mention two important topics that have been uh, worked with within this PNL. We, uh, as civil society organizations, indigenous organizations, and unions, have participated actively, uh, working, gathering information to give it to the state. So it is part of this plan. Unfortunately, in topics that are so important, such as access to water, right to water. Uh, this information was provided, but this is not even part of the diagnosis. And now we are suffering a uh, hydric uh, crisis in huge territories. Eka territory has been affected by mining companies. That is not part of the analysis and not plan of the activities of the plan. And something that is missing um, has to do with the situation of human rights defenders. First of all, they are considered as individual persons. They are not considered as uh, collectives, as uh, communities uh, that defend the environment. And this is something that is of great concern to us, which is that they point out that according to the civil society, there are reports of persons criminalized by the companies. No, we do have information. We have uh, given the cases uh, to the Ministry of Justice. We have even uh, given this information to the Commission and the, even the UN with a very serious case of uh, persecution to uh, human rights defenders by companies. And there is also a huge criminalization apparatus we have the Fendamad case, an indigenous organization that uh, was granted precautionary measures for the mass computer people. They have precautionary measures granted by the commission. Two years ago, they explain how the uh, company was accessing the mass computer uh, territory and the company is now demanding the indigenous organizations to publish a letter uh, in which they say that they would hire advisors of illegal uh, um, com of companies that are illegally deforestating the uh, forest. This is a new way of criminalization and produces uncertainty. The Ministry of Justice, as part of this p &A plan, they say that defenders' uh, violations are caused by illegal economies and industries, but criminalization that has been uh, acknowledged by the former reporter when he came to Peru, that is one of the uh, most serious violations. It has to do with companies, but this grows and affects uh, defenders with the whole state apparatus. This is this organization is at risk of being uh, self-criminalized. That is the case, and we will continue afterwards. Thank you. I.
I would like to say that we are going to compensate the time that was used by the um, the society, we're having some problems with the commissioner's connection. I will now give the floor to the state. Gracias, señor presidente. Estimado señor presidente, distinguidas comisionadas y comisionados, señores Commissioners, y señores, buenos días. Mi ladies and Carlos gentlemen, Giseño, my name is Carlos Briseño. I'm the director of human rights of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Deseo empezar Affairs la intervención Peru. nacional resaltando que I wanted to start my intervention by highlighting that the initiative of the Peruvian state committed to comply with its obligations is realizar una audiencia temática. Here to have a thematic hearing. The approval of the National Action Plan on Business and human la voluntad política del Estado peruano para responder de una mejor manera a esta importante temática con miras a asegurar y con el objetivo de asegurar el pleno disfrute de los derechos humanos de nuestros nacionales y de las personas que residen en Perú. Como todo instrumento creado para afrontar importantes desafíos, Estamos ahora en etapa que corresponde a la implementación del Plan Nacional de Acción. Estamos avanzando poco a poco y con la mejor y la mejor voluntad política del Estado más allá del gobierno en el cual nos encontramos. En ese sentido, estamos atentos a recibir las recomendaciones. We want to receive the recommendations, comments, comments and technical assistance that will contribute to strengthen this Peruvian state's initiative. In, la in this hearing, we will have the high, high officials from different sectors. Now I give the floor to Julio Vargas Jaramillo, the Vice Minister of Human Rights and Access to Justice. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of this honorable commission for the Peruvian state, this is very important to participate in this hearing where we see the public policies related to business and human rights. Through this process, in the dialogue with the commission, the uh, OHCHR and the representatives of the civil society will identify the measures that should be strengthened and prioritized among our competencies. We also come to this here to uh, reaffirm our commitment to comply with international obligations and domestic obligations as regards human rights. We want to inform on the implementation of the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights 2021-2025, which has to do with one of the recommendations uh, issued by the Working Group of the United States on the matter of human rights and transnational and other types of companies on their country report on Peru. It also implements the recommendation received during the third cycle of uh, the universal study and a previous commitment related to a national human rights plan. The national plan on business and human rights has the goal to create an articulation, a strategic articulation between the state, the companies, the indigenous and uh, peoples, trade unions and the civil society to strengthen the national policies related to responsible uh, business behavior to ensure human rights in this matter in line with the guiding principles of the human of the united states of the united nations sorry and other bodies we have implemented in this drafting process the implementation and follow-up uh, actions focused on human rights and standards related to business and human rights. Some of them are the national policy of gender equality, national policy of uh, for elderly uh, to for 2030, the policy related to uh, development for disabled people, the uh, plan for children and adolescents for 2030, the national policy related to human trafficking and exploitation to, for 2030, and the national policy for dignified work. It's especially relevant for the Peruvian state that we have different national policies aligned with human rights and that this approach incorporates guiding principles related to business and human rights to protect, respect, and redress 
the national plan contains five strategic uh, targets, 13 goals, and more than 150 indicators that should be achieved by 2025. We started the process of implementation in an articulate way with different agents from the public say, sector and stakeholders. This documents, document underwent three stages. The first was the approval of a working methodology to draft the plan. And there was a strategy where 100, 132 representatives of uh, the civil society, the companies and the, and the indigenous peoples participated. Also different international cooperators. There was a, a balanced dialogue based on equality and good faith. On the second stage, we had the diagnosis of the plan on 23 topics, among which there is informality, the protection of human rights uh, defenders, the rights of um, indigenous peoples and prior consultation, studies on environmental impact, such as hydrocarbons and other different activities and uh, rem extrajudicial and judicial remedies. We incorporated the impact on, sanit on the sanitary crisis caused by COVID-19. During the third stage, we developed the uh, drafting of actions and indicators to reduce the gaps as regards the information received by the diagnosis, which made actors achieve uh, consensus and provide their points of view on the concrete actions that were incorporated on the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear commissioners, the Peruvian state is aware of the great challenges in our country res in respect to human rights and business conduct. And it's our responsibility to do our best to guarantee human rights for all people. We are convinced of this, so the National Action Plan guides the intervention of several entities from the state, and this is why we hope to have the technical assistance of the Commission to strengthen our strategies to implement the plan. Now I give the floor to the Vice Minister of the Environment, Mariano Castro. Muchas gracias. Muy buenos días. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, commissioners, representatives from the civil society and representatives from the state, I want to share with you the vision of a human rights related to the environment. And this is why I want to ask for your authorization so I can share my screen. There we go. So, Please, could you confirm if you are seeing the first slide in full screen? We see your screen, yes. I want to start by pointing out that I will be addressing five points. First, the first has to do with policies. The second has to do with the human rights defenders in terms of uh, the environment, then heavy metals, the circular economy and oil spillages. First of all, I want to uh, highlight that the government policies and the environment policies have established priorities to push uh, different activities. I'm sorry, uh, I'm being told that I, all, all slides are on screen. That's right, you have to, to click on presentation yes we're seeing it correctly thank you very much for for letting me know so as i was saying we established priorities for policies not only for the environment but also in general to foster a transition to a low carbon economy and to adopt mechanisms to uh, create uh, protection against uh, climate change and this uh, situation we have the central goal to reduce actually to, to face the reduction of goods and services from the 
uh, environment that we provide to people. And in relation to this, there is a set of measures that seek to uh, safeguard environment rights and to foster better business uh, measures as what has to do with uh, the protection of human rights defenders uh, we approved in 2021 this plan to include human rights defenders and where we uh, detail different specific mechanisms as regards the environmental sector there was a ministerial resolution that established a protocol to protect human rights defenders to where there are different measures preventive measures and protection measures i want to highlight that we are right now drafting the first report on the situation of human rights and environmental defenders this will be the first one in the region we are identifying the risky situation and uh, protection measures and urgent protection measures uh, in the framework of this protocol. I wanted to, to highlight as well that the Ministry of the Environment has the goal recently to advance, to foster these mechanisms and also to develop strategies against uh, environmental crimes that also threaten uh, the peoples. This report on the situation of human rights defenders and environment defenders is uh, right now being worked on and it's foreseen to be uh, ended, to be completed by 2022. We will be able to foster different environmental actions with this protocol. The next item has to, I, I'm sorry, and also we, uh, alongside the uh, Justice uh, Ministry and other organizations from the region and indigenous organization, we had the first regional um, roundtable to ensure the appropriate implementation of these measures to protect environmental and human rights defenders in different regions such as Madre de Dios and indigenous departments. This uh, working group will be uh, become official through a resolution. Then we have the impact of heavy metals and other uh, dangerous toxic substances. We have a very uh, important problem here as regards social, uh, the social sector and the environment, which has to do with the pollutants in water, different uh, hydrocarbon sources and activities that do not comply with environment uh, regulations. This is why in July 2020, we fostered a process to create an action plan on this matter with the participation of different sectors and the uh, civil society. It was approved by um, a supreme decree, a, a special plan with three uh, great uh, pillars. One has to do with the management of environmental uh, quality, then uh, health and sanitation, and then institutionality with the goal to foster different synergies among the different levels of the government to diminish the risk of the use of different toxic substances that is to improve the health of the population as a whole. The next topic has to do with circular economy. What we are fostering here is a process in which businesses cease to uh, implement a model, uh, the previous model, to transition to a circular economy. We are implementing a roadmap for different sectors. Right now, we are working on a Peruvian platform for a circular economy. Uh, made up of different social and environmental institutions, and we will be continuing fostering a hum uh, circular economy. The environmental emergency related to oil now on uh, January the 15th, uh, 25 kilometers uh, at north of Lima, there was a very big oil spillage 
And despite the company uh, reporting that on that date, they only spilled four, uh, 0 0.4 uh, barrels, we identified that there was no less than uh, 11,900 oil, oil barrels that were spilled. So we made a, a follow up of this situation. There's also a set of uh, administrative measures. There are 14 measures to uh, for containment that were implemented and that are part of actions in the framework of the in environmental crisis with the goal to to improve environmental health and to have specific working teams to address this important issue also we have 35 reports published on our website that speak to this multi-sector Tutorial plan. I also wanted to to add finally that there is a fund to redress the impacts, and we are fostering it to for its appropriate implementation. The government is allocating different uh, resources to uh, compensate uh, this impacts. This is made up with different indigenous organizations as well. And we hope to, to compensate the impacts in 32 sectors. Thank you very much for your time. And now I give the floor to the Vice Ministry of Work. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear colleague. Good morning. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yes, we can hear you. We would like to greet you all president of this hearing organized by the Commission regarding public policies on business and human rights in Peru. In our country, in November 2020, last year, we have provided subsidies for thousands of companies in the private and public sector, promoting recovery of employment, which uh, was affected by the COVID pandemic. We are going to extend technical assistance and trainings through different institutions in all regions of our territory. We, we forgot to send the regards of President Castillo, who is following closely our work. Minister Chavez has also sent her regards to each one of you. Okay. In order To make this presentation, we have prioritized the organization of a work code. We do not lack this code as other countries do. And in April, we are going to present before the Peruvian state this project. We have developed regulations and norms that fostered the 170 convention of the ILO regarding the uh, declaration uh, of principles concerning enterprises. We have a line of training of work without harassment and there's a platform to register harassment cases in the private sector companies, which we monitor constantly, taking into account international standards and the recommendations made by the Committee on the Rights of the Child. We have 
a bill to modify the current code regarding uh, child labor, regarding health and safety, we are working on a proposal so that we can update our policies this year. Finally, I would like to mention a problem common to many countries and we will soon publish measures that we're going to develop to allow workers to have an insurance. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your time is out. I request the state, sorry. I'm sorry, do you hear me? You have run out of time. Uh, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. That's perfect. So we are going to continue with the hearing according to the agenda. We will now listen to Mr. Jan Chirav from the office of the UN High Commissioner. It's a pleasure to greet you. I will give you now the floor. Dear commissioners, representatives of the delegation of the Peruvian state of the civil society, indigenous communities, human rights defenders, good morning to everyone. Do you hear me? It is an honor to be here with you after eight months since the approval of the first uh, National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights, it's important to reflect on its effective implementation in the future. The plan may represent um, great progress, but it will be significant to the country if the different ways of uh, discrimination if the prior informed consultation of indigenous peoples is included, if they recognize critical collaboration of defenders, especially of those persons who defend Afro-Peruvian uh, people, the civil society unions, and if they strengthen and modify reparation systems affected by uh, companies. Como el mecanismo de protección de personas defensoras, aunque también necesita ser fortalecido, y las iniciativas sectoriales de protección de personas defensoras. Destaca la labor del viceministerio de gestión ambiental del Ministerio del Ambiente que se presentó, eh, que luego de la aprobación del protocolo sectorial de protección de personas defensoras a través de la unidad funcional de derechos ambientales viene adoptando we have been adopting different uh, preventive measures to uh, provide opportunities uh, uh, to defend different uh, cases, different uh, reports, the process to create a base basis to guarantee uh, an environment to protect uh, human rights. Judicial harassment of uh, members of uh, indigenous communities and other defenders show that the human rights defenders and indigenous people's defenders are exposed to higher risks and when they uh, defend human rights and when they denounce the uh, damaging acts of businesses that are not well managed, uh, particularly as regards extractive or communities and also uh, as regards illegal um, actions such as mining or uh, drug trafficking. But as the civil society mentioned, these threats do not come from illegal or irregular agents, but also from legal companies through attempts to uh, criminalize or harass other people. We have pointed out the need to, to protect against these actions and to address the structural 
measures, the structural reasons behind this. The defenders should be recognized by the government and the private sector as actors of sustainable development, and their demands should be incorporated to improve both public policies and business uh, activities. If we want to protect the environment, we need to protect those to protect the environment. It's also important to address the specific threats faced by uh, women defenders on their families, the harassment and gender-based violence, discrimination, intimidation and, re and retaliation. For instance, the police uh, attacks against uh, domestic workers, uh, related to a public trade union who protects protest peacefully so that the municipal municipality uh, does not hire companies that do not protect the rights and they have been detained arrested and uh, repressed and attacked as the committee has expressed A committee against uh, all forms of discrimination against women has expressed that there, there is a need for a specific registration, a registry of these actions, whether it be by the public sector or the private sector, there should be a registry of this action against women with uh, publicly available statistics and information. It's also vital to have a dialogue where we see the participation of women defenders to have uh, comprehensive responses against different harassments and attacks, attacks to their families and to themselves. Actually, the access of victims to reparation is key for our office. To that regard, the National Action Plan guides the response from the state to uh, identify legal and administrative mechanisms that should be uh, coherent. This is why it's important to address the requests for reparation that have been received for decades and those who have been affected by the impacts of uh, heavy metals and oil spillages and mining activities or hydrocarbons or extractivist uh, agriculture, as the vice minister mentioned and the civil society mentioned. Uh, in January, there was a great oil spillage on the coastline, and that uh, catastrophe adds to other oil spillages that happen in indigenous people's territories that have caused contamination and an impact on the health of the peoples. When these things happen, the response has to do has to have a human rights approach. There should be a mechanism uh, for the affected people in which the communities have significant and ongoing participation for the decision making processes. It's important to recognize the comprehensive uh, redress, which should not be reduced only to economic compensation, but also should include other measures such as the recognition of uh, the facts, the impact to the environment and the restitution of the damaged uh, territories and to recognize the capability of the communities to search participatory and sustainable responses. The government, um, created a bonus for this and it's uh, very important to include all the people affected including children adolescents and women and those who are part of uh, in informal uh, jobs their informed and prior consultation is essential for a comprehensive reparation i conclude by saying that I, I admire the indigenous peoples, the defenders and the civil society who are present today. And I recognize their struggle to get the state to comply with their obligations to create a very, a real inclusive, sustainable development based on dialogue. I repeat my commitment to cooperate 
with uh, the Peruvian authorities to achieve these goals. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you to the UN representative. We will now continue with the agenda. We will now have 20 minutes to listen to the comments or questions uh, from the commission. Como relator en este momento para que se contabilice el tiempo. Y In order quise... to uh, do that, we will register the time. And I would like to say as reporter that it's a pleasure for the, to discuss this situation within the period of sessions uh, to discuss such an important issue. I would like to congratulate the complete presentation made by the civil society, which allows us to understand the viewpoint of the civil society on this plan. I would like to highlight that the national plan on human rights that has been um, discussed and has been part of this hearing has been translated into English, Quechua, Quechua and Aymara. Business and human rights is a topic that is part of the priorities of the Commission through the special rapporteurship. We, and this is a topic about which we issue a statement. We have developed a report on business and human rights and we have established a series of criteria uh, the centrality of uh, human persons the inter uh, relation of human rights equality and non-discrimination right to development right to a healthy environment the right to defend human rights transparency and access to information prior and informed consent, due diligence in terms of human rights and accountability and uh, redress. Among those uh, criteria, we have also included uh, the combat of corruption. I mention this because we have uh, listened, apart from the presentation of the estate, an aspect that was brought up by the civil society. And I would like to ask a question so that the state is able to respond that. How do we effectively guarantee, take into account this principle of non-discrimination and consultation? As the civil society said that when this plan was being drafted, they requested prior consultation that did not occur at that time. And now that the plan has been published, how do we guarantee that right to prior and informed consent? That is my question, the comments I wanted to make. And so that we can uh, all take the floor, I will now give the floor to my colleagues. First of all, to Commissioner Joel Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank, as Commissioner Rallon, the Peruvian state for bringing up this topic before the commission. It is not common for the state to request thematic uh, hearings. When they do so, I interpret that as a willingness to make their public policies more transparent. And it gives the opportunity uh, to exchange opinions with the civil society society as we have done. I would like to greet all human rights defenders that I hear uh, present today. Their press, uh, participation has been key as it has made evident one of the key aspects that these national plans should include, which is the development of public policies so that the right to defend human rights, in particular, the right to defend land, 
and the environment make, becomes uh, effective. I also want to congratulate the uh, willingness of the Peruvian state to receive technical assistance from the Commission. Probably in the future, the special rapporteur, uh, Soledad Garcia Munoz, will um, discuss this further, as this has been a key for the Commission. As you know, there is a report published by the Commission that encompasses everything related to business and human rights. And you will have the opportunity to receive the feedback of the special rapporteur. I would like to call on the attention of the state and future collaborations with the Commission that there is a practical guide regarding uh, recommendations for the development of plans to mitigate risks that affect human rights defenders. This is a practical guide that has been recently approved by the Commission. It is available to you on the uh, Commission's website. And the aim of this guide is to make a series of recommendations available to the state to mitigate risks. And this is closely related to human rights defense, uh, human rights defenders protecting the land and the environment. We know that there are underlying causes that provoke these risks and all mitigation plans should deal with them. That is the first comment I wanted to uh, make. If there is a time to continue discussing, I have a second comment, but it has to do with the implementation of the intersectoral mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders. I would like to briefly know in this space, what is the opinion of the civil society regarding recent developments in Peru, such as the creation of the intersectoral protocol, the mechanism that they have, because protection of human rights defenders has an additional dimension. It's not only about protecting the right to defend human rights of attacks caused by state agents, but what has been expressed by you is that there are obstacles or even attacks individually by companies, which could be of great concern. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner. I will give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark. Thank you very much, Commissioner Alon. Uh, good, good afternoon um, to the representatives of the state and to representatives of civil society organizations, to the special rapporteur from the UN system and to all of my colleagues within the commission. I want to start off by joining Commissioner Hernandez in appreciating the, the efforts of the Peruvian state to prepare this national action plan on business and human rights. Um, as we know, states have an obligation to protect, respect, and fulfill rights. And I think this national action plan um, does all three of those. And that obligation to protect, respect, and fulfill encompasses all spheres of life, public life and private life, and, and also affects the actions of the state and non-state actors, such as those in the business sector. So I really want to acknowledge and appreciate um, this excellent practice in the pre preparation of a national action plan. In relation to non-state actors, the obligation includes regularly a regulatory um, obligation so that the actions of non-state actors and those in the business sector do not violate um, the rights of, uh, of others. And in particular, paying attention to those who have been historically discriminated or marginalized and have had real challenges in accessing their socioeconomic, political, um, um, social and cultural rights. 
And we also want to pay attention as we think about the, the, the plan on business and human rights of the right to a healthy environment. And so I note the, um, the discussions of the civil society organizations who are present here today. One, their concern that they were insufficiently um, included in the consultations, notwithstanding the wide range of consultations that, that happened as inputs into the plan, but that they feel that they have not been sufficiently included. And also that there are some critical areas which their perspective might have strengthened in the development of the plan. So the question of regulation of non-state actors in uh, the extractivist industries, as well as I note very carefully, private security companies and private security companies all have, you know, um, there, there are risks associated with private security companies that are insufficiently regulated uh, in relation to the violation of the rights um, of historically marginalized people. So I note their concerns there, and they have, they, of course, they do have other concerns. My questions are, I have two main questions. One, I have in regard to the, the fact that the National Action Plan has already been adopted, what might be the mechanisms of ensuring the engagement of uh, an inclusive engagement of civil society actors, and in particular, those who come from historically marginalized communities? Would there be a possibility of their inclusion in mechanisms of follow-up and oversight on the implementation of the National Action Plan? So that's one question. How can that sort of non-involvement be, be, be um, remedied as you go forward with implementing your National Action Plan? And then secondly, in relation to the informal sector, and I do believe the representative of the state was about to tell us about insurance for the informal sector. So I, I, I hope that we can hear a little bit more about that. But I would like to also recognize that the National Action Plan does have a focus on uh, informality, and it's an important focus because of course, so many people work in the informal sector and so many businesses are located in the informal sector and the informal sector is also a space of, um, of you know, non-engagement or non-fulfillment, particularly of labor rights. But I want to end by saying, I know that the plan speaks about the obligation to protect, respect and remedy. And I do want to suggest that there's also another obligation and that obligation is the obligation of, to fulfill human rights. And as we think about the informal sector and small enterprises, and there's so many small enterprises in our, in, in our, in our economies, does the National Action Plan address supporting small, uh, small sector businesses, particularly those led or run by historically discriminated and marginalized populations? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Clark. I give the floor to Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I wanted to thank the state and then the members of the civil society and also the uh, special rapporteur of the United States for this hearing because this has been very illustrative for me. This is uh, an ideal hearing because it shows not only the initiative of the state to improve the situation in such a sensible topic, such as the relationship between human rights and businesses, but also that the state is open to receive uh, comments, feedback, and to dialogue, and especially relate in related to this action plan. So in that spirit, I wanted to ask a question to the state. How does the state think that the commission can support the state's for efforts in all these different uh, pillars that they have to undertake? Thank you very much, Commissioner. The, the president's connection has cut off. I give the floor to our special rapporteurship, uh, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you very much, Mr. President and Vice President of this hearing. Can you hear me okay? Because uh, at times I, I lose uh, connection. Good morning to everyone. A special 
uh, greeting to the commission, to our colleagues from the executive secretariat, the civil society and the state representatives of the Peruvian, Peruvian states. I also thank the fact that the state itself has requested this thematic hearing and the fact that they have request that we have requested special attention on this topic so we drafted a report which has has been uh, quite mentioned by commissioner Rallon and commissioner hernandez this is the most comprehensive report to date on the matter of businesses on human rights in the light of the international inter-american uh, obligations on human rights with this report we seek to uh, make this matter inter-american in relation with the uh, guiding principles issued by the united nations more than 10 years ago and we also want to offer tools to the state and the civil society and the private sector and other organizations from in the international arena our recommendations um address all of them. We want to center, to focus the human rights in what has to do with the obligations that derive from the inter-American system for the state, which has to do with a respect guarantee, prevent, uh, oversee, regulate, and adapt their domestic law and to research, investigate, and sanction. I think our report is the best roadmap we can offer Peru for the implementation of this, such an important progress, which is the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights, a plan in which the rapport, special rapporteurship had the opportunity to participate precisely to offer this input. However, I wanted to second the uh, regional representative from the United States in the sense that a national plan related to business and human rights has a meaning when it's effectively implemented. And to that end, the recommendations from our report is the best tool we can offer, which we're trying to offer this systemically with our colleagues from the United Nations. In that sense, our report its first report recommendation, in fact, references the fact that while states have this special tool, such as this public policies, they should also assess their frameworks, their regulatory frameworks, to identify possible um, legal uh, voids, and also to identify different uh, binding measures so that the companies have the responsibility to act with due di diligence as established in the guiding principles. I would like to ask the Peruvian state if there are any uh, studies similar to the ones that we um, present in, the, in our roadmap that have been uh, drafted. I wanted to request the state as well if they can inform to us what are the next steps to implement to implement the plan? What would be the budget allocated to the plan? And as Commissioner Clark was asking, what would be the participation of civil society? And also I wanted to second uh, Commissioner Bernal's comment as regards how can we support them to follow up with this here? And that would be the key to be able to hear from the state and the civil society, what are their ideas on this matter so that we can work in detail from the special rapporteurship. And finally, if I may, I want to express my solidarity with the Peruvians, um, Peruvian people uh, with regard to the recent oil spillage in Lima and also our concerns related to this spillage and uh, the different uh, measures that we have identified in our report. We echo the precautionary measures that are in force, and also we are available to help the state and the civil society to implement all these uh, commission's recommendations. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. We are at the final uh, end of the of the hearing. According to our schedule, we have 10 minutes for the civil society and 10 minutes for the for the state. So I will really ask you for the for the cooperation to respect your time. I give the floor to the representatives of the civil society. Well, first of all, as regarding the defenders, these policies were achieved thanks to the participation at the Inter-American Commission at a hearing in 2016, at which we struggled to achieve these policies. Um, and these have been implemented step by step, little by little. All these policies are thought as in a logic related to protect illegal attacks to defenders. Despite the fact that we have presented very serious cases to which we are requesting uh, precautionary measures or cases such as uh, Quechua and Quechua who have been uh, processed uh, for 14 years for a protest manifestation 14 years ago, the uh, office of the general attorney still works on this on this uh, case we are exposing the need of a public policy to def to protect defenders but these cases that we presented are invisibilized we have uh, been working for 10 years these peoples have been requesting the closure the uh, the closing of their cases for 10 years and the general attorney's office still uh, insists on on carrying these cases on there are cases in which there are no uh, measures that have been taken there are no protection measures for these types of violations or cases we need a protocol that seeks to uh address criminalization cases, which is not an invention from us. The life, the, the freedom of this indigenous peoples are at, at play here, are in danger. How can we implement this national plan on business and human rights? Here I request from the commission the following. They have asked this from the state, but from the civil society sector, we want you to see that if you are going to intervene you should pay attention to our own proposals as well, as well, because we are participating in the dialogue despite the fact that our proposals have not been pro incorporated. None of them have been incorporated. Civil society's proposals such as the right to water is not in that plan. So please, if this is going to be fostered because there was a commission that was created for Action 15 that had to start working uh, last year and so far is not progressing. This commission should be uh, comprised by now, but so please, we ask you to see that there is participation from the civil society, which is effective, not merely decorative. That would be all for now. I give the floor to my colleagues now. The National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights, as was mentioned by official Gerardo Biriseño, has to do with the political will of the Peruvian state. It's a reality because they take into account the opinion of the business sector and other entities, but not from the peoples and least of all from indigenous women. They should address their inputs and not consider us as people who are not subjects with rights. They implement their actions in line with their own will. They do not guarantee the collective rights of women and indigenous peoples. There are state officials here that are hindering the proposals from the indigenous women, such as the right to the to the mother nature. So 
uh, the Ministry of Justice has not supported this. They are not complying with international obligations and they have an un anthropocentric conservative approach. They become accomplices. For instance, we see this uh, oil spillages. For over 50 years, we have been suffering this in the in indigenous territories. So we want to have previous consultation and agreed consultation. How can we trust that the state will promote prior consultation and consent if they are not complying with this to, to carry out their plan? They are not guaranteeing collective rights in this national plan. The state itself is, is infringing our rights. Are they going to implement indigenous rights according to international standards? Are they not going to violate those regulations? I'm not sure. Thank you very much. Additionally, uh, commissioners, as regards businesses and human rights in relation to the environment, we need to point out that the case of oil spillage in the Peruvian Sea on the part of Repsol is a proof of public policies that force companies to respond for their actions. This case was, uh, was seen as an echo side case an unprecedented situation. And this requires a, a deeper reflection so that this, the companies can respond as regards the responsibilities in terms of the environment. Right now, while we are here at this hearing, there are associations of fisher people who are at the, at the doors of this embassy of Spain protesting against Repsol because some days ago, the company proposed an agreement to give them 3,000 soles as an advancement of this uh, compensation. In this case, there cannot be this transition because we have not determined the magnitude of the damage and the state has not complied with its uh, role to uh, oversee this situation. Different companies uh, signed an agreement on the 4th of this this month, this year, to create a proposal of compensation without having previously met with the associations that were affected by the oil spillage. This, commissioners, is not the only case as was mentioned uh, by the One Piece representative, in the Amazon region, we have had similar cases. For instance, cases from of uh, oil spillages that have not been addressed properly to date. So commissioners, in that sense, we request that there is a greater reflection in terms of the actions embedded in the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights, and that the civil society's demands and indigenous demands are taken into account. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if the civil society has concluded. Yes, I would like to point out that one of the proposal was the incorporation of the indigenous jurisdiction as an indispensable mechanism to achieve, to get remedy. And this indigenous jurisdiction should be taken into account. And I would like to request the officials of the state, their commitment to move forward, not only in the commission that should have created last year and which has not been created. Um, they cannot say that every year there is no baseline for care giving policies uh, when every year women uh, present information um, that is related to uh, breastfeeding. So 
there should be a commitment from the companies. The civil society has presented a proposal, has presented a proposal. They have to include the right to water and the executive power should present the proposal regarding the Escazú protocol. Thank you. I will now give the floor for 10 minutes uh, to the state. Les escuchamos, por favor. You have the floor. Bueno, yo voy a iniciar. I'm going to start. I would like to greet everybody, representatives of public institutions, colleagues from the state, brothers and sisters from civil society organizations. I am part of the Secretary of Social Management and Dialogue. And I would like to share with you our efforts to keep spaces of dialogue open even during the pandemics. We are focused on the development of spaces of dialogue through different uh, mechanisms to achieve agreements and best practices to transform uh, conflicts and solve problems. The work of the Secretariat has to do with accompanying actors in the conflict, promoting a space of um, dialogue so that everyone can express their different issues affecting them. This is focused on achieving benefits to all uh, victims, promoting investigations and achieving creative solutions, respecting the dignity of the persons. Conflicts are related mainly to access to water, pollution of the environment, economic benefits, uh, regarding some activities in certain areas and the participation in decision-making affecting the civil society. The Secretariat is in charge of managing information to identify and early manage uh, risky situations due to social conflict, conflicts. There are eight strategic actions within the framework of the PNA, which has been described in, within the strategic matrix. The Secretariat has participated since 2019 before the approval of the PNA, and we can inform certain actions that have been fulfilled. The strategic uh, goal in August 2021, we passed a protocols and guidelines for the intervention of the executive power, regional, local governments in terms of uh, social management and dialogue. In August 2021, we passed the guidelines for the significant participation of women in dialogue processes to deal with social conflicts. The second uh, a strategic uh, guideline in 2021 was the approval of the protocol to monitor commitments to establish procedures and information flows to uh, closely mon monitor commitments taken by the states and, and other actors within the space of uh, dialogue. In Junin, the space of dialogue with the Commission of Truth for the Juana Cayali and uh, Peasants, these are some of the places where we are already implementing the PNA. I will now give the floor to my Pinaco colleague. Fonafe. Fonafe. Okay. Mr. President, commissioners, good morning. Good morning to all the participants from the civil society. On behalf of Lorena Mansi, Executive Director, we would like to thank the uh, invitation to inform our participation within the PNA. Since 2015, CONAFE has implemented a series of efforts in order to articulate a corporate common strategy 
so that there is responsible corporate action as a pillar to uh, guarantee the uh, development of different uh, activities by the companies, aligning social uh, corporate responsibilities with um, the policies that have been developed by the CONAFE. That's why we have developed management instruments such as guidelines and uh, me measure mechanisms to guarantee social development within companies. Also to foster the improvement of social management through the creation of synergies in order to use the know-how from other organizations that manage uh, similar projects and within the framework of these two lines of actions, CONAFE becomes part of the PNA promoted by the Ministry of Justice, as we include within our corporate black practice due diligence criteria in order to prevent possible human rights violations by the groups of interests and the companies. Our participation in the preparation of the PNA was done in carrying out a jointly effort within the CONAFE and the Ministry of Justice, as we require technical tools that enable us to assess the establishment of the principles of um, social responsible um, conduct. And the participation of CONAF in such plan includes the creation of permanent uh, training program based on international standards and carried out with the uh, uh, support of the OECD. Thus, we will be able to count on the strategic support of the collaborators. Implementation of human rights plan within the corporation with a supposed uh, group to monitor all the activities of this plan, which will be a link between the corporation and the activities carried out in our companies through the actions that have been previously described the uh, national fund to finance business activities of the state includes this uh, approach regarding corporate behavior and human rights. We will now give the floor to Maria Pia Messia, Vice President of the Ministry of Women. Mm, Mr. President, Commissioners, representatives of the civil society, the UN system and the Peruvian state officials. I'm going to share with you the main actions fostered by the Ministry of Women and Vulnerable Populations to promote gender equality and non-discrimination in the workplace. Within the framework of the PNA, in this sector, we are working on the design and implementation of the national system uh, regarding care in order to promote co-responsibility between state, this private sector and communities and men and women. As part of this process, we are preparing a normative proposal for the system to exist, through which we are aimed at uh, finding a uh, equal distribution of the time uh, that is uh, the time women spend taking care of their children so that they can spend the same time as men in the workplace. In a jointly effort of the state with different private and public institutions, we gather um, the opinion of thousands of persons in Peru and uh, children, adolescents, elderly, and caregivers, and the private sector as well. This participative process shows, among other things, the importance of progressing, fostering uh, measures to improve family life, life uh, both in the private and the uh, public sector. We are working on the strengthening of capacity of, of the business sector in terms of gender equality and non-discrimination, promotion of workplaces free of violence and best practice regarding um, policies 
uh, to achieve uh, different agreements. We are working on free on safe companies free of violence against women, which establishes us the criteria to find a balance between uh, family life and the work. Thus, uh, companies should promote um, maternity and paternal leaves, among other things, equal distribution of uh, time for caregivers. Ratifying the commitment of the Peruvian state to work towards the implementation of public policies to deal with the violations of human rights that are take place within the uh, activities, business activities, I conclude my participation. I would like to thank the state for bearing in mind the time that they had. And now it's time for final comments. I would like to say that some questions made by the commission were not answered. So, um, I would like to request the state to send these answers by written. I would like to say that as a country rapporteur, there is a commitment of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights regarding this issue, this topic, which is a priority, business and human rights. And regarding the request for technical assistance, there is a commitment to support the special rapporteur and myself, a country rapporteur. Um, we are willing to provide support to you taking into account the different standards in this regard. Not only within this plan, but take into account the context and the different axes where there is an interaction of other issues related to human rights. So I would like to thank the participation of each of the persons present in this hearing, and I would like to adjourn this hearing. Thank you.